Hello guys, my name is Alex Gomez and on today's video we're going to be sculpting Lord Voldemort. So let's start with the sphere just to give the shape of the skull. Keeping as a reference uh, the thumbnail that I have in the top right corner. I changed the materials there. But I keep carving the eyes and filling up a little bit the nose. Then I mask and invert the mask to get the neck out and shape the neck a little bit and make that transition between the neck and the jaw a little bit more smoother. I refine the neck. I also work on the orbital bones and then I add the sphere for the eyes. I place the eyes, I mirror with C plugin. Now C plugin, C plugin and uh, sub to master. Then I start working on the eye sockets, eyelids, and I give the shape of the mouth without getting into too many details and working on the cheekbones as well and give a little bit more proportions. I also add a little bit more details, kind of like make pronounce the chin and those lines around the nose, even though he has a, doesn't have a nose, but it's worth to do. So I start adding a little bit of details, no much, no too much, uh, kind of like crazy details. And then I add the ears. I sculpted some ears before, so I just keep them and save them. So it kind of like save me a bunch of time when I'm working on characters like that. I just bring uh, ears or I can bring eyes or I can bring hats as well. I refine a little bit more the eyes, the eyelids and the eyebrows, even though he doesn't have eyebrows, but kind of like that part on the eyebrows. I refine as well the mouth without getting into much details, so just a little bit, just a little bit at a time. I feel a little bit the nose and make those nostrils. Change the color to see how it's looking. Then I add a little bit more details, I'm getting this part into a more, uh, a more detailed one. Then I kind of like uh, feel the neck and kind of like give it a little bit more volume on the face. Uh, and in this instance, I merge the head with the, um, with the ears and kind of like refine some of the kind of like secondary details. I don't get into like a really straight details at all because I'm going to see remesh this eventually. So there you go. I'm going to add uh, a hand that I had. As I told you, sometimes I say some sub tools, so that saved me time. I get the hand and then I will see remesh it. Then after that, uh, I get like a lower uh, polygon count, so it's easy for me to pose that hand. So that's what I do. I just start masking individual fingers and I start moving them and kind of like give the Kind of like the shape that I kind of like, that I that I try to 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 achieve in in this piece. So kind of like a, using like a mental powers or something like that. Then I create just a sphere, and with that just uh, start uh, building or uh, sculpting the body, and just giving the shape. And I just kind of like a, uh, create a sphere and start see no see measure but dynamizing. Dynamation and I did another sphere just different for the forearms, just to keep keep it separate for the moment. I will eventually like merge them together, but uh, not until I'm happy with the with the shape. It's kind of like that block out uh, stage that I do in the beginning of the characters, and then when I'm happy with it, I will merge them together. I start adding a little bit of details of the hands. Uh, I wasn't sure if I was going to go kind of like a little bit uh, stylized or realistic or kind of like something in between. And I think that the end result of this guy was something in between realistic and stylized, which I personally like. Um, but yeah, it's uh, this is a good exercise to kind of like uh, sculpt hands and sculpt those uh, little details. So after finishing the hands, I move into the eyes. So I just kind of like giving a little bit of color. It's kind of like a 
had like a white, uh, like a, he was blind in this part. So what I do here with the uh, standard brush, I use the rectangle, drag rectangle and an alpha. So I can give a little bit of that little volume on top of the, I think it's iris. And then I change the material to kind of like a toy plastic. So it gives me like a nice reflections there. Even though I rendered this in Blender, I like to have a feel of how the eyes are looking. So after having the eyes, I keep refining a little bit more um, the shapes of the head and also also a little bit the hands. So I kind of like a move between those uh, sub tools. I refine and give them more proportions, like better proportions, which is gonna make a big difference. Then I change the color. I feel the color and I start poly painting. I give like a, a very general color, for example, like a, like a really dark for the, around the eyes, really dark for the lips. And then I started blending those colors together, having the RGB intensity like pretty low, like you can have it between 10 or 15, 20 for those, for that intensity. And I started doing like a, some uh, test renderings, even though like I don't render it really in, in ZBrush, but uh, it's, it's nice like once in a while to have those renders. But then after adding some colors, I move into the robe or that dress. I don't know how you call the thing. Like, sorry, I, sometimes I don't have the right vocabulary, but I start making some folds in that, uh, like a rope, I think it is. Just to give some shapes and kind of like do some, kind of like a, no, don't wait. It's not that I waste my time doing some renders. I just like to, to see how it's looking like once in a while and do crack the render right there. Then I start adding some different colors to the skin. It's kind of like to break out a little bit the straight tone that I that I put in the beginning. So I like to use kind of like those cracks to break out the skin color. Also, I use a different, different kind of like a brush there. Uh, the spots as well, just for the skin. So I kind of like a move back and forth between the head and um, the hands. Then I carve where the nails are gonna be placed. And after carving those spots and add a little bit more details, I mask every single part of the fingernails and I extract them. And I extract them this time with thickness. Then I see remesh them and I start just kind of like move them and give them like a proper shape. So after doing that, I start working more in the cloth. And I just give in those cloth folds. I'm still with dino mesh. And I'm not gonna see remesh that uh, yet. Like I sometimes like to uh, carve out the clothes and then I see remesh. So, so it kind of like it flows. My, my C rematch flows at the same direction as the clothes, so I don't get a, any like a weird things when I just C rematch and it had like a perfect quad. I just want to kind of kind of like a, get the flow in those folds once I C rematch that again. So I can just go back uh, and some more details. Then I took a, a sphere and give it a shape, C rematch, mask the outside, extract. Siri mesh and with the uh, simulator I give the a little like a like extrude so I can give a nice shape for the color and that's a, a really simple uh, technique that you have seen me use in my previous uh, videos then I play around with a little bit with the lights and that's it bring it to blender for a render so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, thanks for sticking around. Thanks for voting in my poll. So next video is gonna be a full on tutorial from 2D to the 3D. That was the topic that won.
So see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe, share, watch my other two videos and have an amazing weekend, guys. Take care. Bye.